Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox, Incredible Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the MAX spacecraft. This is the spacecraft that makes use of the RD-704 engines. Well, as a pair they are known as RD-701 uh, that I presented in a previous video. And this is not my model. I did do the textures for it. Uh, I haven't put little labels or CCCP or anything like that. Uh, but uh, I did the textures in Substance Painter by necessity, but the model uh, was given to me by Raider Nick, who probably got it off of Beranda RU, I believe, though the one on Beranda RU is in a different format than what I received, so I'm not 100% sure, but it was a complicated model to deal with, let me tell you. I had gotten it years and years ago, and initially, uh, it, it has lots of polygons, I'll just show you. 876,000 vertices, and it was it, it was tough. Uh, it's got little vertices on various really tiny bits all over the place. A lot of them on the docking module, which I have not adapted. I just got rid of that. But it sort of had the opposite problem from the International Space Station. With the International Space Station, everything was one mesh. Here, everything is a lot of meshes. Uh, you can see these are the meshes. And so these are all individual things on this model. And it's a long list. In fact, here's a scroll bar. Maybe uh, I'm not sure if I can capture it right, but um, the list goes on. There are thousands of little meshes. I don't know why. It's like every polygon has to be its separate mesh, but there's no there's no good reason for it to be this many. <laughs> this just this is just so. This was very hard to deal with, and. Uh, yeah, because ultimately you have to apply uh, material to each of these. The materials uh, that came with the model didn't seem very useful or high fidelity, so I decided not to use them. And so I had to make sense of all this uh, stuff. And, well, at least in the end it turned out fine after after a while. Initially I tried to cut things down and make it simple, but I wasn't satisfied with that. So this model is now 80 megabytes in KSP. The model, which is the largest model file I have in KSP. I don't know of one that's been made for KSP that's more. And that's just the body. Uh, and because I just kept the polygons, I broke up, uh, I, I assembled the mesh in such a way that I could keep the polygons. So it's complicated. But uh, here we have the cargo bay, open bay doors. We do not have the docking port arrangement. As far as how it comes, because I'll link it in the video description, there, there are issues with it still. <laughs> there, there always are with my models. And one is the attachment of the, the elevons. It's a little bit weird. Another thing is that the wings are supposed to be able to fold up. Uh, I decided that, that was probably not advisable if we wanted to have the elevons work properly. So, because the elevons wouldn't go with it if they're animated like that. So, we have fixed wings instead of folding up wings, and I think that'll be alright. And otherwise, we have body flap, left elevon, left wing, right elevon, right wing, rudder. Most of it is in the body, including the OMS engines all the RCS. I don't know about all the RCS placement on here, so we might be missing some RCS thrusters. I could only go with the ones that were visible. As far as I know, there are supposed to be about 10 more, so I did not see those. And we have the vertical stabilizer. The rudder, uh, when I attach it, here, uh, let, let me try and put it together for you. So spacecraft body, that's the easy part. Um, right wing, attaches to that node. The left wing has to be flipped over and attaches to that node. And again, the elevons, I haven't gotten the attachment right. They're, that one is just weird. <laughs> I, I, I thought I had that better than... I just have to figure out how to get it to face the right way and still work. So, yeah, that's gonna take some tweaking. For now, this will have to be the way it is. At least the Elevon actually actuates, so... I always have problem with those. Left Elevon. Left Elevon actually fits pretty well. I mean, I don't understand. I really don't. Uh, sometimes, but uh, a little bit of tweaking will do there. It's that much. 
and uh, the vertical stabilizer. And so when I try to attach the rudder, it does bad things to the center of lift. So let's get the body flap on. So, well, first of all, the cargo bay might be doing stuff. Oh, and we haven't put the engines on, right? And they have a middle node. They do stick out beyond the body flap. And I don't know about the wisdom of doing that, but there we are. So, uh, this is how it is. And we've got a modest amount of fuel here. And when I try and put the body flap on, not the body flap, the rudder. Well, we can do that and see see what happens when I turn it to the way it's supposed to be. I'm not sure that's a good thing. So for now, given that I believe that its uh, its orientation is a problem, basically. I'm using B9 procedural parts for the rudder instead because, yeah, that that shouldn't be happening. It's a little bit light. It should be 27 tons, and I'm trying to figure out where my my mass went. It carries a 7-ton payload, but I don't think that's counted in its mass. I might have to adjust its mass a little bit. But if we take a look at just the OMS engines, which are built into the body, what we have is 597 meters per second, and if we put a 7-ton payload, it'll have a fairly normal 400 meters per second for an orbital spacecraft. So power is a bit of an issue. I don't know what kind of power it had. Probably fuel cells, so I have to build that in, but they're not built in yet, so you might have to stick something in the cargo bay for that. Uh, so those are the caveats. Uh, let's flight test it. I'm going to open up a jet engine version and so these engines uh, I've got I used F100s because they were about the right mass uh, and we have intakes obviously and otherwise everything else is the same except I've uh, filled up with kerosene instead of kerosene and HTP it actually used kerosene and HTP for its RCS and OMS uh, I only have verification on it using kerosene HTP for the RCS technically, but I assumed that the OMS uh, used it as well. If we take a look at the center, that's a little bit interesting. Sometimes the center of, oh, it might be because of the rudder, I don't know. Anyway, sometimes the center lift does strange things. I hope it stays consistent, but I'm not sure. The little pink things are supposed to be insulation. Um, they are Raider Nick inspired, let's put it that way. So, yep, we're just going to try it out on the runway. Okay, and one thing about Max is basically the cockpit points at the ground. Uh, so that's a little bit of a trick, but we'll work around that. Uh, actually, I'll use Atmospheric Autopilot, which I have in here, and Ignition. So I am a little bit suspicious about the difference in the center mass, center lift locations between the two. It's sort of lifting its nose on its own, which is interesting. But I guess the pointing down position was not sustainable. I don't know, whatever. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yep. Oh, we're off the ground. And you can see the our uh, aerodynamic surfaces work. Oh, it's picking up speed now, though. I thought it had a lot of drag, but it just needed to get up to speed a bit. Just trucking along. In order to test it the way it was designed, I'm going to have to come up with some way of separating it from an AN-225 and also I probably want to make a custom AN-225. And that's going to take a little bit of time, so I'm not going to try it out like that. I have an alternative. Unfortunately, we don't have split rudder air brakes. 
I'm sure some of you know how to make one from the procedural parts, but I don't have one here. I did not make one with the rudders that came with the, the rudder pieces, I guess you could say, that came with the model. This isn't ever going to be part of another pack because it's just too big. It ends up being more than 100 megabytes. So yeah, no air brakes is going to be a problem right here. Also, I should probably land on the shuttle runway instead, which is not as bumpy. I can even see the seams on this runway right now. Can you see those? Yeah. Well, okay, it's losing, losing speed. That's good. Whoa, 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 it's got drift. Oh, no, no. Ah, okay, that's not a behavior I expected. I was just trying to yaw with the rudder, and it's done this thing. What's it going to do? Uh, it's paused while it decides the fate of the Kerbals. Oh, oh. Ah, the Kraken is merciful today. Okay. I don't know what to make of that. And it's still sort of on its tail. Which suggests that the landing gear is too far forward. But the landing gear is where the landing gear is supposed to be. The model has the doors there even though we're not using them. I, these are just stock wheels, of course. Hmm. Current thrust is negative. There's no reaction wheel, probably goes without saying. There we go. All better. Alright, well, Jeb lives to fight another day. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna try and make an AN-225 at some point and that's gonna take some doing. So I decided that what would need to happen is that the Max would have to be tried out as a shuttle in a standard shuttle configuration. But I will save this for another video. So we did the aero test this time with curious results. I mean, I guess uh, using the rudder caused too much side slip and uh, we went out of control because of that side slip. So. It's not completely unexpected. Uh, probably tune down the rudder authority on your own attempts. Um, but yeah, I'll link the parts in the video description and you can play around with it and then you can see what I do with this. Uh, this obviously takes some calculating uh, and yeah, we will see how this works next time. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.